everyone. In the previous class, we discussed about uh, various failure modes uh, in the case of an excavation. It may be a roof failure or it may be the side wall failure. As far as the roof failure is concerned, there can be the fall of a wedge under gravity into the excavation. And I mentioned to you that what exactly is that condition that there is going to be the uh, fall of this wedge in the excavation under gravity from the roof. And there can be the formation of the wedge which can slide through the side walls of the excavation causing the side wall failure. So, today we are going to see that how using the stereographic projection method we can find out that what is the size of the wedge its height as far as roof failure is concerned. So, take a look here this we discussed in the previous class as well that at least three discontinuities are needed for the wedge to be formed in roof. So, you see here we have these three planes that this wedge is formed and a vertical line which is drawn from the apex of this triangle you see that it is passing through the base of this wedge which is this and therefore we saw that okay if this is the situation then in that case this wedge will fall under gravity from the roof to the excavation or inside the excavation. Now, this particular condition of the field can be represented by the stereographic plot in this manner. You know that each and every discontinuity can be represented by a great circle in the stereo plot. So, take a look here these are the three discontinuities and the corresponding great circles they have been drawn in this particular manner. And the intersecting area is this the apex of the wedge is represented by the center of this circle which is lying very much within this intersection area and therefore, if we have this type of situation which can be plotted in this particular manner in the stereographic projection and if you have this situation that the center lies within the intersection area of all the three great circles, then in that case we can say that there is going to be the gravity fall of the wedge which is formed in the roof to the excavation. Now, how can we find out the shape and the volume of uh, this uh, potentially unstable wedges that is shown in this figure. So, these are the two figures. So, this is the one where you are plotting all the details of uh, the discontinuity planes and the wedge in the stereographic uh, net and here taking the information from this we try to get the uh, plan dimension as well as the height of the uh, wedge that is being formed in the roof. So, basically this gives us the idea about the supplementary con construction in conjunction with the stereographic projection for the determination of shape and volume of the structurally defined wedge in the roof of a tunnel. Please note that we are discussing about the roof failure and not the side wall failure. So, how do we go about it? So, basically we have three planes as I mentioned that minimum three planes are needed for a wedge to form in the roof. So, let us say we take these minimum three planes. So, these are represented by the corresponding grade circles A, B and C. Take a look in this figure. This is what is your grade circle A. This 
great circle A. Similarly, you have here this as great circle B. And the third one is this which is the great circle C. So, three discontinuities shown as three respective great circles A, B and C. Now, how do we get their strike direction? So, C, um, if you join this So, this is what is the strike line of plane A, that is the strike line of plane B and that is the strike line of plane C. Small letter A, B and C, they are representing strike lines of uh, these planes A, B and C respectively. Now, the traces of the vertical planes through the center of the net and the great circle intersections, they are given as AB, AC and BC. How can we determine these? Take a look. See, this is the great circle A and this is the great circle B. So, wherever they intersect, it is this point and if you join this point with the center that is this line. So, this is going to give me the trace A B. Similarly, intersection of this great circle A and great circle C that is this point you join it and you will get A C. In the similar manner, great circle B and great circle C, this is the intersection point. If we join these, we get B sub, B C. So, this is how we can get the traces of the vertical planes through the center of the net and the great circle inter, uh, intersections which are A, B, A, C and B, C. Now, what is the next step? I assume that it is a circular tunnel with a span of S. So, let us say that uh, it looks like this. So, the this particular dimension is S. Now, this tunnel is running in the direction from 290 to 110. So, let us say that if you have this as a uh, stereo net. Uh, so, here you have north and this is south. So, you will have 290 somewhere here and say 110 somewhere here. You just join these two points. So, this is what is the direction of the uh, tunnel axis. Okay. So, basically this direction is showing you the direction of the run of the tunnel and the span S is the distance between these two as shown here. Now, the direction of the strike lines uh, they will correspond to the traces of planes A, B and C on the horizontal roof of the tunnel. So, how can we plot it? So, take a look here that we have this strike as A, here the strike is uh, B, this is the great circle B. So, this is uh, the strike line and this is the great circle C and this is the strike line C. So, what we do is on this figure, what we do? We take a point and then from this point, 
we draw a line parallel to this C. Okay. So, let us say this is what is your C. So, I draw a line parallel to this and it intersects the other uh, side of the tunnel at this particular point. Then from the same point, I draw a line parallel to the strike A, which is this. So, let us say I mark it with three small lines and see like this. So, this line I draw parallel to this particular line. I do not know what will be its extent. So, right now I leave it as it is and then I come to this particular point and from here I draw a line which is parallel to the strike of B. So, let us say that it is this one. So, I draw this line parallel to uh, this B here and the extent of this strike is also not known. So, I just draw a parallel line to this B here and wherever these two intersect that will give me the third point of this triangle. So, this is how that we can determine the uh, plan dimension of the uh, wedge. So, these strike lines uh, we can combine which will give us the maximum size of the triangular figure which can be accommodated within the tunnel roof span. So, I mentioned to you how we can draw these parallel lines and how we can get or how we can complete this triangle. Now, the question is this is the plan dimension, how I can get the height of this wedge. So, we will learn that as well. So, what we are going to do here is that once I get this A, B and C here on this. So, first thing is that we need to find out the apex. So, for that first we have the plan view of the tunnel. So, apex of the wedge it will be defined by finding the intersection point of lines uh, AB, AC and BC which is projected from the corners of the triangular wedge face. So, you see that this is B and C. So, from the intersection of B and C what I will do is I will draw a line parallel to BC from this uh, stereo plot. Similarly, from the intersection point of A and B, I will draw a line parallel to AB and from the intersection point of A and C, which is this point, I will draw a line parallel to AC. So, wherever all the three lines they intersect, that is this particular point, this will be the apex of the wedge. Take a look here. Uh, so, once I know this apex, I can find out the height h of the uh, apex of the wedge which is above the horizontal tunnel roof. How to do that? So, what uh, you, you need to keep in mind that tunnels uh, that tunnel runs in a direction from 290 degree to 110 degree. So, what I am going to see is the plane which is uh, something like this. Okay. So, what I do is I take a plane which is perpendicular to this. Okay. So, there I define the section x x. So, basically this is the tunnel axis as the tunnel is running in, uh, in a direction from 290 to 110. So, 
normal to that tunnel axis, I am going to consider a section x x which has been shown in this figure in this particular manner. Now, when I take that uh, section which is normal to the tunnel axis and if I take a view from that, that is going to give me the dimension h which, which is the uh, height of the apex of the wedge above horizontal tunnel roof. So, how to do that? Take a look, this section x x this intersects the traces A and C at the points that I am shown in the figure, this point and this point. Now, these two points, these will define the base of the triangle uh, when you look in the direction x, x. So, what we do is we project these in this particular manner. and you take any line here. So, this is going to be the dis two points and the distance between the two points. This is going to be the base of the triangle in view x x that is when viewed in the x x direction. Now, apparent dips of the planes uh, c and a they are defined by angles alpha and beta. The question is how to determine and why we are taking the planes a and c and not the plane b. Take a look here that here this is what is the c um, point and the a 1 that is defining us uh, the base of the triangle. Now, you see here these angles alpha and beta, these are measured on the stereographic projection along the line x x through the center of the net. So, you see that the axis of the tunnel was something like this, that is 290 and 110. So, I draw a line that is perpendicular to this which is this line and that is showing the section x x here and of course, this has to pass through the center of the net. Now, take a look here this alpha how it is determined. So, from the outer circle we take uh, wherever this plane x x intersects the plane uh, c. So, that much division you can count and find out what is the value of alpha. Similarly, from this outer circumference wherever it intersects the plane a that is the great circle for plane a that is going to give me the value of angle beta. So, from this stereo plot I can get the value of angles alpha and beta. So, once I know that what I will do is from this plane corresponding to this c I will draw a line making an angle alpha and from the point corresponding to this a. I will draw a line making an angle beta. So, wherever these two intersect that is going to be the height of the uh, wedge. So, we can find out the volume of the wedge how it is one third of the height and multiplied by the base area of the wedge as one can determine from the plan view. So, how can you get the um, base area? It is this hashed portion between the three lines this one. So, this is the portion you can get the area from and the height you can determine from here. So, after you get the height and the area all you need to do is use this expression to get the volume of the 
wedge. So, this is how one can determine in case of roof failure, we can determine uh, the volume of the wedge. Now, there can be a situation which is little bit different than the situation that we discussed, although it is going to be the failure of the roof, but then the uh, it can be bit different, there may not be typically the gravity fall of the wedge in the excavation. Now, if the uh, that condition include uh, when the three joints they intersect to form a wedge in the roof of underground excavation, but the vertical line through the apex of the wedge it does not fall within the base of the wedge. So, let me draw a figure and maybe I will be able to explain it in a better manner. Let us say if uh, this is what is uh, your say the excavation ok something like this. And then you have maybe another set of discontinuities are like this. So, this is the plane now which is formed three planes and they are forming a wedge like this in the roof itself. Now, if I draw a vertical line from the apex which is this point. So, you see I draw a vertical line and it is falling outside the base. This is what is the base, but then it is falling outside the base. So, in that case what will happen that the failure can occur only by sliding on one of the joint surfaces or along one of the line of intersection. The failure is not going to be like the gravity fall of this wedge in the uh, excavation from the roof. So, this is a check that one needs to see whether there is going to be the gravity fall or not. So, how to handle this situation and how we can show it in the uh, stereographic projection. So, this I explained you that in case if you have uh, this type of situation that the although the wedge is formed in the roof, but the vertical line passing from the apex is not falling in the base region that is this much, but outside the base. So, in that case this is going to be the situation. So, all these three discontinuities can be plotted on the stereographic net with the help of uh, their uh, respective great circles. So, you see that first, second and the third great circle and it has of course formed a closed intersection figure like this. But what is the situation as compared to the earlier one? In the earlier case the center of this circle was falling inside this uh, intersection figure, but in this case what is happening is that this center is outside this intersection figure. So, therefore, we can say that no gravity fall of the wedge from the roof will take place. Now, uh, there can be two situation that if this intersection figure that is formed by the great circle fall to the one side of the center of the net. So, you see it has uh, fall on uh, a particular side this side, then there is going to be the additional condition that is plane or the line of intersection along which the sliding is to occur should be steeper than the angle of friction phi. So, how can we check that? Uh, so, what we do is uh, we know the angle of friction. So, from the outer circumference we count those many degrees and then we plot or we draw this circle which is also called as the friction circle here ok. So, this has been represented with the help of a uh, dotted uh, circle of course, the center will remain the same this is the center of the uh, net stereo net. 
Now, this condition is satisfied if at least a uh, part of the intersection figure falls within the circle which is defined by counting of the number of degree division corresponding to the angle of friction from the outer circumference. So, you take a look from the outer circumference I count and reach to this friction circle which is this dotted circle and you see some part of this intersection figure is within this friction circle. Now, in such situation the construction of true plan view of the wedge uh, can also be made, but then it will follow the same principle. So, let us take a look. Uh, so, again here we have the three discontinuity plane, plane A and then this is plane B and then you have the third plane which is plane C. So, we can get their uh, strike direction take a look here if you just join this this is going to be point A for the circle B you join here and you will get this strike as B similarly for this circle C. It is the direction. Okay. Now, uh, again in this case uh, whatever is the tunnel axis we take a section that is perpendicular to that and we try to view in that direction to obtain these uh, views. Now, how to get the uh, friction circle? So, from the outer circumference I count the uh, degrees here and then I draw a circle that is the dotted one which is the representing or which is representing this angle uh, phi. So, wherever there is the intersection say the intersection of great circle A and great circle C it is this point you join it with the center and you will get the trace A C. Similarly, you can get trace A B and trace B C. So, what we now do is we try and draw the lines parallel to A, B and C and hence we will be able to get the uh, this triangle and then we draw the line parallel to A, B, A, C and B, C. These are parallel to the respective uh, directions here. Uh, this is A, B, this is B, C and A, C. So, in exactly on the same principle as we discussed earlier, we can draw this particular figure. Now, here uh, we take the strike length of trace C of plane C as the dimension L. So, this has been shown here, this is dimension L. So, how to determine the height h of the wedge in this case? So, we take the view x x again this is uh, perpendicular to the tunnel axis uh, as mentioned here. Uh, so, this is uh, a right angles to uh, line a b which passes through the center of the net and intersection of the great circles uh, for planes a b. So, you see that this is what is uh, the uh, a b that is shown. So, you take uh, it this x x perpendicular you take this x x perpendicular to this and then how we can uh, get the angle alpha which is the true dip of the line of intersection of the planes a and b that we can get from the stereo plot here take a look this is the intersection uh, a b and from the uh, outer uh, circumference i measure this angle alpha in the direction of the section x x. So, this is how from this figure I can determine the value of alpha. So, I take the various projection lines here, here and uh, from this particular point and 
So, we, we really do not know that what will be the orientation of this a b. So, I take this uh, value alpha from the stereo plot, try to draw the line which is making an angle alpha here, wherever it intersects uh, that is going to give me the uh, height h that is the height of the wedge. Now, there can be another situation that the entire intersection figure it falls outside the friction circle as has been shown in this figure. So, you see that the three great circles are 1, 2 and then the 3 and their intersection figure is this and which is just lying outside the friction circle which is represented by this dotted circle. So, this represents that the gravitational weight of the wedge is not high enough to overcome the frictional resistance of the plane or the planes on which the sliding would take place. So, what does that mean? This signifies that the wedge is going to be stable against sliding. So, that is how we can determine uh, whether there is going to be the gravity fall of the wedge that is formed in the roof or there is going to be the sliding of the wedge along any discontinuity plane or the wedge is going to be stable against sliding. So, in this class uh, we learnt about uh, the uh, stereographic projection and its application with reference to the roof failure. We saw the conditions that when there is going to be the gravity fall of the wedge or there is going to be the sliding along any discontinuity from the roof or the wedge is going to be stable as far as roof failure is concerned. Uh, in the next class, uh, we will continue this discussion with reference to the uh, side wall uh, failure. Thank you very much.